Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another session about the Fulbright Foreign Student Program. Um, we will just wait for a few more minutes to have more people attending because I see more people are joining us for the session, which is nice. So um, I'm Sahara Kamkoum, the Exchange Program Manager at Amidis Tunisia, and I manage the program, the Fulbright Program for Libya. And I'm glad to have with me my colleague Amira today, who is the Education USA Advisor for Libya, who will be leading the session about study objectives. Um, hi, Amira. Hello, Sahara, and hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. We're happy to have you with us. And I actually, guys, encourage you to um, ask your questions since Amira is here leading. This session, so if you have anything unclear about such to uh, ask your questions. So yes, as Sahar said, uh, today's session is going to be about the study objectives. And uh, I hope that each one of you have already started the application for the Fulbright. And I hope that you have already started working on your personal state and the CV. So make sure to share any essays you have done or you, I mean, any draft that you have with me. And I'll be more than happy to review them and to have individual Zoom meetings with, with each one of you. And I also have hope that today's session is going to be beneficial for all of you. Great, thank you, Emira. So um, prior to starting talking about study objectives, I would love to have like a very quick overview about the program. Uh, just a reminder uh, that uh, we are talking about the Fulbright Foreign Student Program. This is a great opportunity for Libyans, uh, students and professionals who are interested in pursuing a master's degree in the United States. So this is a fully funded opportunity and the funds go uh, goes up to two years. Um, and you will be receiving a master's degree, so you will be graduating. This is a graduate program. Uh, of course, uh, the program comes uh, with benefits. You're not only going to the United States to uh, receive a degree or graduate from university. There is also the cultural part of the exchange. Uh, you'll be living in the United States, experiencing lifestyle, the, the culture, the country in there, learning more about the United States, but also helping Americans learning about Libya, your culture, the tradition, the country. So you'll be ambassadors of your countries. Uh, you'll be gaining knowledge and work on your skills and soft skills. And hopefully what you will learn there, you will go back to Libya and implement it. Hopefully that will um, help you contribute or give back to your community or your country. Of course, you'll be working on your English and improve your English language skills. Uh, you will be also part of a lifelong alumni network, hopefully global leaders or potential leaders in the future. So uh, there are like a lot of things. Um, so this is a fully funded opportunity and we do cover the expenses related to the program. Uh, so uh, we cover any uh, fees related to your studies. Uh, students will be receiving monthly stipend. Um, this is like a fixed amount of money that you'll get on a monthly basis to help you with living in these states. Uh, you, you also, there is like also the book allowance, equipment and conference allowance, thesis allowance. Um, we also cover your round trip ticket uh, to, to the United States and back to Libya. Also, we cover the visa fees and we help you with your visa and you will be uh, receiving health coverage or the health insurance while you are on program. Very important note to keep in mind, this is a long-term program, so it allows grantees to bring their dependents with them. And by dependents, I, I'm talking about wife, husband, and kids. Uh, but a very, very important point to keep in mind is that the program does not cover any expenses related to dependents. So if you are bringing someone with you, uh, husband, wife, or kids, you need to show us that you have enough money to support your family in the U.S. Okay, uh, of course, 
like any program, there are like some requirements that you need to meet to be eligible to apply for the opportunity. The first thing, you must be Libyan resident of Libya throughout the process. Um, you must have at least a bachelor degree uh, to be eligible. You need to be able to attend the interviews, hopefully late, uh, like um, between July and August, the interviews, uh, the in-person and the virtual ones. Uh, we want to see that you have strong academic records. Uh, that's something that we see through your transcripts. Uh, and of course, you need to complete uh, the online application and you must submit a complete application. Um, so the work experience is not a must, but it is preferred and it's a plus. But if you are applying for an MBA, you must have two years of work experience. Of course, we want to see that you are very interested and you are very serious about your application. Uh, and you are interested also about the cultural exchange parts um, and something that we will see uh, from your essays. Uh, it's very important that you work hard on your essays because we read them carefully and students get disqualified if they don't have strong essays. And by the essays, I'm talking about the statement of purpose and study objectives. We already had a session about personal statements uh, and I wanted to have another session about study objectives because students, they get confused about what to write. This is a common question that we get. What should I include in my study objectives? I feel like I'm repeating myself and I'm including the same things that I've already included in my personal statement. Very briefly, I'm just going to like... Um, like um, say a few things to keep in mind and then I'll give the floor to Amira to talk more and elaborate. So basically when you talk about personal statement, it's personal statement, so it's personal and it's pretty much academic and you're telling your story, uh, why are you applying for the Fulbright? Why did you choose this major in particular? You'll be talking about your experience um, and factors uh, and pretty much you are promoting yourself for this program. For the study objectives, there is the word objective. So we're talking about the future, about goals, about aims. So basically you'll be focusing on aims and reasons. And you'll be talking also about how do you think this opportunity like the Fulbright or receiving this degree will help you achieve your future goals or career goals. So it's very focused uh, on the professional parts. Um, I'm not going to talk in details about this, uh, but we've already had a session about personal statement, and I do encourage you to go back to previous live session on Facebook, Amidis Libya, and check the personal statement. But today we'll be talking about the study objectives. And uh, I'll give the floor now to Amira to elaborate more. Again, I encourage you to ask your questions, and you can include them in the question box. The floor is yours, Amira. Thank you so much, Sahar, for the beautiful introduction. I personally enjoy uh, listening to you while <laughs> introducing the Fulbright program. So uh, again, hello, everyone. This is Emira from Education USA. I am the Education USA advisor for Libya, and I'm here today uh, to give you more details about how to craft a perfect study objectives. So let's start with the, the first slide that we have here. Of course, we have to introduce what is a study objective. So as part of you know um, the evaluation of your application, you are required to attach uh, one page, like uh, no, no more than one page, preferably, of a clear and detailed description of your study objectives. So give your reasons for wanting to pursue them, you know, in the United States, describe the kind of the program you expect to um, undertake, and explain how the proposed field of study fits in with your educational background, with your future objectives and your future involvement in community development. So again, just to summarize, the study objective is a clear description uh, of what you want to do in the future, in which you need to explain you want to pursue these objectives. So describe the kind of the program you want to take. And uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, how it fits uh, in with your previous training, uh, or even like with your future uh, objectives, okay? 
So uh, what is the Fulbright or what is the program look, looking for? So of course, they're looking for a picture of your overall personality. So you may imply rather than state uh, the facts. What, what do I mean? Like, for instance, don't say I'm a smart person, uh, but you have to demonstrate it, imply it. So don't say I am very energetic, but you need to give evidence by the fact that you worked, let's say, uh, after college for six hours every day. And and still had time to volunteer and do other activities. So when you mention this, you show that you are energetic, but don't throw the adjectives in your study objectives. Also, your academic background and work experience. It would be a mistake to talk about your high school. So start with your undergraduate career. School records may be like worth mentioning um, if there is something extraordinary about them. Also, the continuity. So the Fulbright Committee is looking for some continuity in what you have done, what you want to do also in the near future, and what you hope to do in the distant future. So connect all of them together. For the next point, we have the commitment and the motivation. So don't simply say, I am committed, because we know that everyone applying for the full ride is committed, but find a way of inferring that uh, you are indeed highly committed and motivated to your proposed field of study. So again, that's why it's called study objectives. And of course, the communication skills. So the Fulbright team will be looking at your writing skills, how well you can present yourself clearly and intelligently when you're writing. Hence, the importance of uh, spending considerable time on the statement. So these like communication, communication skills are very, very important. OK, so this is the prompt uh, of the study objective. So Sahar, I'm going to leave the floor quickly to you before I give more details about the structure of the study objectives. Go ahead, Sahar. Thank you, Emira. Um, I just wanted to say a very important thing here. You can see the prompt is long and it has different sections. Um, this is There is a common mistake when students, they work on the study objectives. They answer part of the prompt, not all the parts. This is a very common mistake, so please pay attention. And I believe Emira will uh, talk a little bit about um, the outline the different paragraphs that you need to include so when you when you finish uh, your essay and you are reviewing your essay go back and reread the prompt make sure that you answered all the parts and you did not skip any parts uh, so um, this is a very important note that i wanted to to like uh, share with you before All right. Uh, yes, Sahar, this is a very important note. And just to let you know, guys, there are many ways to organize your study objective. However, uh, today I'm going to share with you an outline that addresses the information in order, uh, you know, is the clearest and most coherent to the reader. So remember, those who are, you know, uh, screening applications, uh, read many, many, many applications. So if they have irrelevant information and do provide detailed information and rational readers, screeners, will probably set them aside. So look at the statement and underline the key points, as you can see here, um, uh, that the application is asking you to address in your study objective. Do not write about information that is irrelevant to what you are being asked to respond to address only what is asked for, OK? So let's move on to the structure that I prepared for you today. And as you can see here, I just suggested four paragraphs. You can write more than four. You can write less than four, it depends on the content, okay? So this is just, again, to help you. This is not the final version that you need to get. But when it comes to organization, paragraph number one, it's better that you describe your master's program that you expect to undertake in the United States. So know what uh, you know, scholarly work or program you would like to accomplish in the US. Decide what kind of master's program you need to take and include specific courses um, or focus that you want to pursue. It is important in this section that you are not to request that you be placed at a particular university. So if you mention, for example, uh, professors, 
at a graduate school mention something of substance that appreciates that person's work okay so describe what you like most and what you would like to do in your master's if you are admitted and um, you know visiting u.s university websites and going through um, uh, the related courses will be even very helpful for you just to know what is really you know uh, uh, what stands out in your major in the United, uh, in the United States, States specifically. So just saying that you want to do masters, let's say in computer and science is not enough. Be more specific by saying things like um, uh, distributed protocols or wireless um, you know, sensor networks, something like that. These are the details. You will uh, have your you know, opportunity to be placed in a maximum four universities after you go through the selection process. So that's, again, paragraph number one. Then paragraph number two, um, you, you so this is like about the experience. So what experience in your background will assure that you are ready to take coursework of this type? So if you have some problematic academic background, address that as well. What future objectives of yours will be facilitated by learning in these areas? Artic what is particularly valuable about the perspective that you will bring to the perspective field of study and the uh, specific department. Include some details about intended specialization in your field, your preparation for that specialization, and anything else you consider important for a judgment of your abilities. Sometimes, like example, articles, thesis, books, etc. Okay, so again, another example. Um, if you got, let's say, uh, all C's uh, one semester, you know, 70%, take a brief, you know, paragraph to explain that you had some maybe emotional setback that semester, but then demonstrate how your grades have been sterling since then. Also, what future objectives, uh, you know, that you have will be facilitated by learning in these areas. Explain how your knowledge and the degree you have in um, a particular area of study contribute to your future, okay? Um, then paragraph number three, describe in detail uh, why you need to undertake your um, studies in the, in the US and cannot be just as easily completed at home in Libya. So it is better to tell what resources and opportunities you feel might be available to you in the United States. Talk about what impact being in a foreign culture might have and how it will positively impact your future. Um, do not make like a general statement and tell how wonderful universities are in the US or how beneficial the Fulbright is, because we know that, okay? So here we need to know something more personal. In paragraph number four, how would getting the scholarship help you when you return to your community and develop it, okay? So what are your future plans after receiving this degree? Uh, be specific with your career goals. Explain how your degree and knowledge in this field will benefit the community or society uh, at large. And mention any social or community you know, activities that you might be involved in upon your return. Um, do not show self-interest and self-achievement in your career. So um, ask yourself, how are you going to implement the knowledge that you will gain from the Fulbright program in the United States? Are you going back to the same institu institution, let's say, you have worked for in Libya? Are you going to find a, a different place to work uh, with may maybe in the future? How are you going to uh, distribute the knowledge to the larger group of people? So these details, they do not show that, you know, uh, you have self-interest if you get admitted to the Fulbright. And this is a very, very important note. Okay. Now the do's, what to do. So do take a lot of time. Don't do this at the last minute. Plan to spend a month or so preparing uh, for the essay and do read the question carefully. So Sahara highlighted this and I highlight it more. Make sure that you answer the prompt. OK, um, show what you why you want to go to, you know, for example, journalism school. Answer that. What are your career goals? Answer that, too. Do write the length of the essay they ask for. So the Fulbright asks for a study objectives between 300 words and 600 words. Don't give them 1000 words and don't give them 50. OK, so do as much research about U.S. universities as you can. And if you can get hold of the you know, catalog, if you have a catalog, maybe at your school, read it. 
So if you can find, you know, someone who went to the US, talk to them. So just, you know, make sure that you are gaining a lot of information and you know what you're doing. And um, find out as much as you can about the Fulbright tool. Okay, next point, um, accentuate your positive qualities. So if you had the highest mark in class, make sure that they know it. Make sure that they know that you were able um, to hold a full time job up while going to university at the same time. Make sure that they know that you won any awards. Make sure that they have an idea uh, about what you have done in your graduate. Maybe let's say um, you have done a gra an uh, undergraduate research at your school in Libya. So if you have done some like, something like that, make sure to include it in your study objectives. Mention your positive achievements as they apply to your graduate admission. So the information you provide about um, you know, your important achievements must be related again to your field. So do mention your work experience or volunteer work that you may have done or extracurricular activities if they relate to your field of study and be definite in your application. Don't say, I hope to do X, Y, Z, but say, I mean, uh, so, I mean, show them how are you going to do that? Like, I'm planning to do this. I intend to do that with doing X, Y, Z. So your language is definite and make sure your essay is well organized and everything is linked with continuity and focus. And don't forget to check your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation and capitalization carefully. Um, and you know, you can ask me to review your essay uh, so I can you know, make sure you don't, you don't have any um, similar mistakes because I'm pretty sure that Sahar takes them into consideration. And the dancer. So don't say um, I've always wanted to be part of Fulbright because um, you know I have heard that is the best program in the world to study in the U.S. This sounds like you know flattery. <laughs> Do not be phony. Be honest about yourself. Be honest. So the Fulbright committee can spot a dishonest essay a mile away, right, Sahar? <laughs> True. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. So, you know, it would not be um, to your advantage to be dishonest. So do not use empty, vague, uh, overly used words like uh, meaningful, challenging, rewarding. We're very tired reading them. Uh, do not use overly common phrases and um, non-specific information. For example, you know, um, I'm just going to structure a sentence. My, my above qualifications um, and my placement in the top let's say 10th of my class demonstrate that I have the leadership organization and um, academic ability to succeed well at, let's say, the, for example, the, the Fulbright. This generic statement says nothing specific about you as an individual, okay? So when you are writing, think about whether it's likely that 100 other people say the same thing or not, okay? So the, uh, here, um, do not repeat information from the application um, unless you use it to illustrate a point, okay? And um, don't say, for example, my major um, is physics because you have already, let's say, uh, you know, say that somewhere else. Instead, say, while I majored in physics, I also took blah, blah, blah on my, my physics major enabled me to take special courses in blah, blah, blah. So do mention your knowledge and experience in the field um, at the university level. And it's usually, you know, a poor idea to mention your high school again experience uh, unless something exceptional happened at that time that changed your life or affected your um, career choice. Do not try to be funny. Uh, you know, uh, you don't know your audience, so um, humor can uh, backfire. Do not use statements like uh, I, I've, I've always wanted to be X, Y, Z. Do not make excuses, uh, but you can talk about the mistakes you have made as a learning experience. If there is something important that happened, for example, excessive work or uh, illness, which affected your grades, go ahead and state it, but write affirmatively, okay, in a way that shows your perseverance as well, okay? And uh, here, Amira, I want to add another point uh, that you should not do, which is plagiarizing. Uh, so this is very, very important. And we've already had a session about plagiarism and how to avoid it, because uh, plagiarism is not accepted, not tolerated. And if uh, any part of your application is found to be plagiarized, you will be automatically and check the 
live that we had, the session that we had about plagiarism, and hopefully that will help you understand what is plagiarism and how to avoid it. Correct. That's a very strong point, Sahara. Thank you. So here, let's add the last point that Sahara mentioned, do not plagiarize. And yes, uh, you can go back um, to uh, the session that we had about plagiarism this month. Uh, you can watch it. And again, make sure to send your essays to share them with me if you need you know, my feedback on them. So this is the... Go ahead, Sahara. <laughs> I just wanted to add one thing because we keep insisting on please do not plagiarize and pay attention to plagiarism just because la last year, I mean, this is something that happens every year pretty much with the program, but especially last year with the Libyan candidates, we had over 25% of our students getting disqualified for plagiarism because we do run essays on a plagiarism checker and unfortunately, some of them they had like really nice profiles but they got disqualified for plagiarism so please pay attention to that great yeah that's a very great point thank you so much Saha. all right uh, so let's wrap it up with two samples so this is the first sample let me give you one minute to read it quickly and feel free to share your feedback uh, in the comment box and then we'll see another sample okay so this is a sample of a study objectives from last year what do you think of it? What is your feedback? Any comments? Do you like it? Why? You don't like it? Why? All right, um, so as you can see here, the sample is very short. The paragraphs are very short and they don't look like paragraphs to be honest. Um, so I got everything I need to know from the first two sentences, as you can see, and it's cliche. Like this, the, the student here is using the words of so interesting, uh, biggest dream, creative, uh, problem solver, I can see it there. So there are many, you know, hows here because me as a reader be like, okay, you're interesting, but then how? I can see that you said you're a problem solver. Can you show me how? So I don't feel this is really personal for a study objective and it doesn't answer the prompt. As simple as that. So instead, it is very vague, very general. So please, um, like, um, uh, you can also pay attention to the punctuation mistakes and the grammar uh, mistakes and the weak sentences. So this is like a sample that you can learn from, uh, you know, the mistakes from it and uh, try to avoid them when you are writing your study objectives. Now, let's take a look at another example. So, Amira, um, while our attendees are screening the second uh, sample, I just wanted to say that an echo what you said about the hows and how they are very important, because it's important that you include concrete examples. Um, you cannot just, like Amira said, throw, I'm, a, I'm like um, a hardworking student, or I'm very flexible, or I'm very open-minded, and that's it, or I'm very creative, but give examples. And the examples are also very important in the, um, uh, the recommendation letters because we want to learn more about you. That's why it's very important that you choose wisely and very carefully your recommenders because we want them to include details, um, not just, you know, throw positive words and that's it in the recommendation letter. Um, I just wanted to add this uh, note, Emira, and then uh, back to you. 
Thank you again, Sahar, uh, for your interesting notes. And yeah, so just to um, uh, like to share my quick feedback about this essay. So the candidate here describes the field he's expected to um, undertake. So it's obvious it's MBA and the plan that fits in with the, his previous professional background and the future objectives. Um, the reason, uh, you know, behind undertaking these studies in the United States specifically, and how uh, this program or the Fulbright will help him when he returns back, you know, to Libya, and how it's going to be beneficial to the society. So here, when I read this essay, I feel that the student, you know, answered the prompt, and it's divided very well, and I can see clear paragraphs, okay, so this is like one of the you know, samples that you can follow a little bit uh, to uh, to um, uh, to have like a good structure of the essay. So here, I don't mean I don't mean following the same ideas. <laughs> okay, I mean. Uh, so before I turn over to Sahara, I just want to summarize. So if you plan ahead and take the time to carefully express what the application asks for, uh, your chances for a Fulbright interview are much better. Great. Thank you so much, Emira. That was uh, really informative and hopefully our attendees, they have a better understanding of what to include in the study objectives and how um, the study objective does not mean you are repeating yourself with a uh, personal statement. Uh, so uh, I just wanted also to uh, share very quickly uh, the important dates that you should save uh, and this is like the timeline. So the application is now live. The deadline is May 1st. You still technically have time, but if you didn't already start your application, go ahead and start it. It has different parts. It's long. It needs concentration and especially the essays. So pay attention to that. Um, then uh, in June, hopefully we'll have the virtual interviews. Somehow in August, uh, we will have the in-person interviews, hopefully in Tunisia, if all goes well with COVID and you know the restrictions and policies. Uh, then if you were shortlisted, we will register you to sit for the exams, uh, the TOEFL and the GRE. And if you are a business major, then you should sit for the JMAT. We will be covering the fees and your travels to Tunisia um, or any other country if you need to. Um, and all you have to do is to prepare very, very, very well, hoping that you get a good score to get better chances, you know, with university admissions. Then you'll be applying for universities uh, between November and December. Again, you won't be uh, directly in contact with the university. We will be the middleman. Our, our office in DC will help you and guide you through the process. Uh, and hopefully the final placement will be between April and May of 2023. If all goes well, you apply for your visa and you start your master's degree um, towards August of 2023. So you are applying for the 2023-2024 cycle. Uh, so, and I also wanted to echo another thing that Emira mentioned uh, is pretty much her offering free service. Uh, it's like a free service from Education USA to help you with your essays and basically to review and give you feedback. So this is a free service that you can also use. And I'll, I, I know um, that Emira will be very happy to help, but of course you need to get appointments, right Emira? That's correct, yes. Um, so yeah, just to give um, an overview about our uh, services, Sahar. Um, so again, uh, I work uh, with Education USA, which is a US Department of State network. And um, Education USA is the official source for international students uh, who wanna pursue their undergraduate or graduate studies in the United States. So uh, we are located in more than 170 countries and territories, and we offer free services like, you know, um, reviewing essays, um, uh, helping you to find the best fit, applying for scholarships. I know this, is, this has nothing to do with Fulbright, but generally speaking, uh, and all of our uh, services are unbiased, accurate, and impartial. Um, so uh, the services that we offer are public info sessions, just like today's session. So you can uh, go back even to uh, the page of Education USA Libya and 
watch the sessions that we had before. Uh, there are some sessions with university representatives. So if you'd like maybe to get more insights about a specific program, could be computer sciences or architecture or anything you have in mind, uh, you can you know, uh, get more details from our uh, sessions. And we also do some sessions with Libyan students uh, who pursued their studies in the United States. Uh, so we uh, you know, host them uh, and they can share their experiences with everyone. And number three, we offer free individual consultations. And uh, these are the meetings that we're talking about. So if you need me to review your essay, uh, you know, personal statements, study objectives, CV, you can uh, simply just send me an email and I'm gonna share my uh, contact details after this slide. So this is the official website of our um, network, educationusa.state.gov. Uh, make sure to go there uh, and uh, learn about our services. And these are my contact details. So you can just text me by WhatsApp or send me an email if you want me to review um, any of your writings, okay? And I guess, Emira, if they are using the service and they are seeking your help with the review, I guess you have a deadline for that, right? <laughs> Definitely, yes. Thank you for reminding that. So, of course, we are here to offer free services and we are here to guide you through your essays. But, <laughs> uh, you know, we have a lot of other things to do. We have a lot of other students to advise. So please make sure to send your essays at least um, no more than a week before the deadline of the Fulbright, because I cannot review, you know, an essay six hours before the deadline. You never know what I have in the schedule. OK, so please respect uh, the deadline number one and uh, don't write a rushed essay number two and I'm more than happy more than happy to help you through that and I always encourage students to actually submit their applications before the deadline and even say if because a lot of students they just wait for the deadline and then submit True. then maybe Take the deadline at least 24 hours before and with internet. have if you have any questions related to the Fulbright uh, like the Fulbright program in general make sure to um, reach out uh, to Amidis but if you have any other questions related to writing uh, you know personal statements study objectives or CV you can reach out to me and Sahara the floor is yours uh, yes, students are very, very recommended uh, to highly recommended to like send emails if you have any uh, questions about the Fulbright application or the, the requirements or anything or any part that it's not clear for you. And you are always encouraged to go and check other live sessions uh, that we had about the program. Uh, so thank you again for attending. So before we end this session, I actually have a question here for you, Amira. So one of our attendees is saying that um, they have a clear study objectives and plans for post studying and what they want exactly, but it's not uh, very, they're not, he's not very good at writing and uh, explaining uh, or using the correct word to explain himself. So what would you suggest uh, for him to work around this issue? Of course, number one, uh, if you want to improve your writing skills, you got to read a lot. So my first suggestion for you before sending your essay is you can read some other essays from the internet just to get inspired. And you can even watch some YouTube uh, videos uh, about, you know, personal statement and study objectives, again, to get more details and even to see some samples that can help you. And number three, we can go over your essay uh, in one of the consultations that I usually have with the students. And I might, you know, uh, highlight some of the sentences that I find kind of weak and ask you to change them or even to suggest some, you know, um, other expressions. So, okay. Okay, so yeah, that's one of the things that I can help you with. Uh, I don't help, you know, with ideas. I don't help with the, uh, you know, the content uh, of the uh, of the essays, but I usually help with the structure of your paragraphs, of your sentences. And um, if I feel like the structure is weak or it's not organized very well, um, this is where I interfere. Okay. 
Thank you, Amira. And I also want to mention that uh, sometimes we do receive candidates who have uh, interesting profiles and we select them, but then when they sit for the TOEFL, um, they don't have high scores because they are struggling a little bit with the language. There is the opportunity of going on a long-term English if you get nominated. And this is like an intensive English uh, training in the United States before you start your master's degree to go and eat to the United States and uh, work on your English language skills, hopefully, hoping that you increase your, you have a better score. And by that you increase uh, your chances for the university admissions. So the LTE, the long-term English training, this is something offered by the Fulbright and it's possible and it can go up to eight months before your master's degree. Uh, so this is also an opportunity offered by the program. So keep it in mind. Um, thank you everyone for attending and thank you so much Amira for all the details. Uh, again, uh, we encourage you to communicate with us uh, whether on social media or via email or contact Amira on WhatsApp or uh, try to reach out to us to get any details or further details and if you have any questions. Thank you so much everyone. Sure. Good luck with your applications and don't wait for May 1st to submit them. <laughs> bye bye. Definitely. Yes, before we wrap it up, Sahar, this is just a reminder for the students that uh, we have done, you know, a session, an info session about the Fulbright. So you got that one. You got another session about the personal statement. You got a session about the plagiarism. Today's session is about study objectives. And we also done a session about how to find the best fit and how to look for universities in the US. So we have a whole, let me call it, Fulbright package. <laughs> so I hope that you're well prepared now. And uh, again, uh, as Sahar said, if you have any questions about the program, make sure to ask her, okay? Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> sure. Good luck, everyone, with your applications. Bye-bye.